English is not my mother tongue, but I take a hard-nosed attitude towards this. I say English is the language we've agreed we will communicate in. I expect grammatically correct English at the very least. And as a, I think Leanne mentioned it, there is the writing center, go get help. And there's nothing wrong with getting help because that is how you improve. When I was in Japan, I wrote everything in Japanese and I got help and I improved. Uh, when I was in German, I functioned in German. I mean, when I was in Germany, I functioned in German as well. Um, so I do not accept the excuse that English is not my native language. When we come here, we accept that if not uh, explicitly, at least implicitly. And I, uh, I personally am, you know, quite gung-ho about that. Um, and help us help you. All of us want to help you. But in order for us to be able to help you, you've got to help yourself first. And some of the things you can do is make sure you read and understand and follow the university requirements, regulations, and deadlines. There's a certain deadline, like I think today is the last day for advanced registration. You don't bother doing this. Then you wait till Monday, the first day of class, and you can't get into the class. You come knock on our doors. I can't get into the class. And you've had two months to register, right? So you've got to do your part if we are going to be able to help you. Um, and you'll get emails. And this is a problem with the new mobile devices because we guys tend to send out relatively long emails because there are lots of things to discuss and I've seen people looking at mobile devices it just kind of goes on and on and on and on and on forever and halfway you get fed up you don't read the rest that increases our workload unnecessarily we are more than happy most of us stay extra hours we are happy to work with you but you've got to do your part so when you get emails from the university from your department from your advisor make sure coming and say oh i never got that you know it doesn't cut it because you've been getting other emails right we know you've been getting other emails so make sure you read it you understand it and if you have questions come back and say hey you know i got this email in the 45th line you said this what does this mean but again if you don't do your part then you find professors who become reluctant to do to go out of their way to help you. And, and this is human nature. I, I, I don't think I'm saying anything uh, out of the ordinary with your friends, right? You have friends who come in, you know, always trying to take advantage of you. After some time, you slowly start backing off. Remember, you know, a professor is not a saint. And I definitely hope they are not saints. Now, we are human as well. And you've got, and then th this is why those of you who are engineers need to interact more with those in the humanities and social sciences, to get a much better understanding of how human beings behave, how we react. Um, and you've got to factor this uh, in, in, into um, your daily you know, behavior. Uh, the US educational system is actually very different from practically all of the other educational systems uh, in the country. It is, we have, it's a relatively flexible system. No, there are requirements, definite requirements, but many different pathways to you know, meet those requirements. And you heard the earlier discussion, how many classes do you take? Some people say three, some people say four, some people say two. Um, but you could also spend you know, two years getting your master's degree. You can spend five years getting your master's degree. Okay. I think seven is the limit. After that, you apply for social security first. Okay. <laughs> Um, and grading is not based on just the final exam. Again, has been, as has been mentioned, the workload starts right from day one and it's uh, maintained uh, throughout. And there's a relatively high workload uh, throughout the semester with very specific deadlines. Um, actually, let me get... Okay, so generally, in, you know, in, in my case, this is a typical grading formula I use. There will be two midterms, a term project, class participation, and a final exam. These things vary a little bit depending upon the nature of the class. Um, and if you get below 60%, you get an F. And then it, it's very straightforward. Uh, the fact that you know, you're a grad student doesn't 
matter. It, it's and, and typically the 90s are A's. And in some countries, if you get 70%, you're running an A. And you know, I've had students come and say, you know, I've been pulling an A, what happened? And I say, yeah, but you got only, you know, 68%, and that's a D. They say, no, 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 it should be an A because I got more than 70, uh, I'm almost at 70%. So check these things out, you know, the, the, the things can be uh, somewhat different. Uh, a little bit about classroom protocol. Please make sure you do your reading first. And in my case, in uh, grad school, I do not hand out reading assignments. I expect you to be on top of that, figure that out. Um, the sequence of topics is laid out and generally at the end of each class, I'll say, okay, we'll continue and discuss these other concepts uh, during the next class. And I do this because I don't want to do hand-holding and you should not expect hand-holding. Oh, you didn't tell us to read chapter two. I shouldn't have to, right? You are in grad school. So again, you know, I'm saying take charge of your own life, take responsibility for your own life. And that's what makes you graduate students as well. Uh, be punctual. I'm very strict about that. And for me, it's a matter of mutual respect. We have a contract, right? You see, Tuesdays, three o'clock to five o'clock, we will meet. And it's clear. So occasionally there are emergencies, but what I found is there are habitual late comes. Fix the problem. I've been even known to shut the door and lock it and not let people in. And then the message gets across. None of us like to take these drastic steps, but if need be, some of us are willing to. And I say, go complain, I don't care. You know? um, but it's a matter of you respecting not just the professor and your fellow students, but you respecting the process in which you are involved. And it's only when you respect others, you'll find that others also respect you. And that comes across very clearly. Um, what is not acceptable is, well, sometimes you can have, you know, some discussions with whoever is sitting next to you, but texting, surfing the net. If you're not going to pay attention to what's going on in class, my attitude is don't bother showing up. Because the moment you start doing these sort of things. It also disrupts the others. It sets a tone. Um, the time when I'm in class, and actually right now as well, I give you my undivided attention. And in class, I expect your undivided attention because if we don't focus on what we are doing jointly as a group, we are not going to achieve what we intend to achieve. So that's something I demand, and which is why if I see somebody's eyes are fading, I pick on them, and that's my way of bringing them back. But definitely, I've even had students trying to talk on cell phones, with, and I come down hard on it because I, I think that's very disrespectful behavior. Okay, so uh, please don't do that. Uh, but definitely um, participate. And again, you know, um, Feel free to challenge the professor, and I think you should uh, do it respectfully. I said, you know, raise your hand. I, 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 and, you know, there are many different ways of disagreeing respectfully without saying, I think you're an idiot, right? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> that. That might set a bad example. Uh, and, you know, if you have different, and in a lot of cases, in engineering, things are probably a little bit more cut and dry, but uh, even then, sometimes interpretation of outcomes can be viewed differently, and it's perfectly fine to say, I have a different perspective on it. 